Apple could borrow $25 billion at 1% or 3% interest, buy Bitcoin that yields 200% interest. And it's the, what, what would you say to Tim Cook? You would say, Tim, if you can buy a $100 billion company that's growing 100% a year and it's profitable, you should do that. Right. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is 100 billion, you know. You can buy a hundred billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, or or ten or twenty or thirty billion worth of Bitcoin. It's growing six hundred percent this year, but two hundred percent a year on average. So my message to any company, whether it's Microsoft or Amazon or Apple or Tesla, is <clears throat> why don't you take the asset that you can get a lot of? You can go borrow twenty billion dollars worth of capital at three percent interest. And why don't you go do an accretive acquisition? And an accretive acquisition is something growing 100 or 200 percent a year. By the way, what's better for Apple to buy Disney or for Apple to buy Bitcoin? Because if you buy Disney, you're buying 100 million moving parts and a lot of complexity and a lot of risk and a lot of competition. If you buy Bitcoin, your treasurer just had to go buy Bitcoin. There is no competition. There is no employee base, right? There is no, the moving parts have all been worked out for a decade. They're not changing. So it, it's a much better balance sheet idea than what's being laid on the table for most CFOs or most CEOs right now. You know, when I tweeted at Elon Musk, I said something and I really meant exactly what I said, right? And most people took a tongue in cheek, but I was very serious about it. I said, you want to do your shareholders a hundred billion dollar favor, convert your $20 billion balance sheet from cash to Bitcoin. And then all the, you know, the S&P 500 companies will have to follow you and it will become a trillion dollar favor to your shareholders. And what I really meant was you buy 10 billion in Bitcoin, you're gonna double it. You can go borrow 10 billion in convertible debt. You're gonna double it again. You're gonna generate $40 billion of investment income on a $40 billion revenue company. Your stock is going to move north and then everybody's gonna realize, holy crap, mm -hmm. this is safe and, and Here's what you're really doing. If you do that, uh, you're basically pointing out that the, the price discovery has disappeared from the bond market and the treasury, the treasury strategy of holding bonds should be replaced with a treasury hold strategy of holding Bitcoin. And so it just takes one mega company with conviction to do it, you know, um, you know and, and you can... At our size, when it was 200 billion in market cap and we leaned on it with a billion to 2 billion, <clears throat> we, could, we could drive a certain amount. But now at a, billion, at a trillion dollars in market cap, you lean on it at about the $10 billion to $20 billion level. And you could do that now. And that's what would catapult Bitcoin to be a $5 trillion asset. And you could say, oh, this is frightening. Not really frightening. Gold is 10 trillion. Right. When when Bitcoin is 50 trillion, then you will say it's a lot better than gold. I mean, how much more valuable is Google Maps than Ram McNally Maps? And how much more valuable is Apple digital photos than Kodak? Right. It's, it's very reasonable for digital gold to be 10 at 5x to 10x more valuable than gold. And I think that guy, it's just out there waiting for someone with conviction to do it. And he, but here's the general logic. If you're Tesla, you know, what do you got to do to create $700 billion of market cap? You got to double your operating income, double your revenue. You know, it's not easy to go from oh. $40 billion of electric cars to $80 billion of electric cars in one year or two years. It's not, how's Apple going to do that? And so the answer is, you fix your balance sheet, right? You fix your balance sheet. As soon as you realize $100 billion of cash at Apple is a liability burning $20 billion in shareholder value a year, as soon as you flip that to $100 billion as an asset generating $40 billion, $20 or $40 billion in shareholder value a year, 
what what is Apple's profit a year right now? I mean, you're like the point is, don't I double their income? Like you take operating income and tack on investment income. Their investment income is nothing. Their operating income is everything. You you cannot, and this is this is the paradigm shift, right? Everybody thinks they're living in a hard, hard currency environment. They think. Argentina is somewhere else and Venezuela and Zimbabwe is somewhere else. Right. And, and that's not us. As soon mm-hmm. as you realize that the dollar is, is inflating at 15% a year. If you crank in any number North of 10% for the next four years and you flip your, your mindset, the conclusion you come to is you cannot create shareholder value or preserve shareholder value without a financial strategy that includes hard assets or strong financial assets. You might like take take Apple and let's say that all of their sales are gonna be limited to Venezuela, Argentina, and Zimbabwe. And then give me all your good strategy ideas and product ideas. And, And again, the answer is your strategy is a losing strategy financially until you get it through your head that you have to flip your balance sheet from a liability to an asset. And the second piece of this is you cannot sweep your cash flows as you know from a strong currency into a weak currency and hold it. And so ultimately, it's a very simple, straightforward approach. Apple could certainly do it. Any company that has ten billion dollars of firepower can do it, I, you know. And guy, I, I will end this thought with another tweet. It's Archimedes, twenty five hundred years ago. He said, "If you give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum upon which to place it, I can move the world." Okay, the fulcrum is Bitcoin, a trillion dollar crypto asset that nobody on Earth can screw with. That's the hard point of, of, of leverage. The lever is literally the $10 billion that Apple has on their balance mm-hmm. sheet or a billion dollar loan. If I, Apple just borrowed, didn't they borrow like $30 billion at a blended cost of capital, like two and a half percent? I see a lot of, uh, a lot of fear, uncertainty, doubt, and noise.